good to have you here kaushik thank you for being here and uh, thanks to people who have stayed back it's been a long day of you know back to back sessions uh, as i mentioned at the start uh, this is an initiative we started last year uh, the influencer marketing uh, initiative and uh, uh, we launched a, a report in the influencer marketing space which maps what's happening uh, in the ecosystem the size of the ecosystem in fact the report that we've released today along with inca which is a group m unit says that influencer marketing uh, is likely to touch 2005 crores in the next few years and this is not uh, as we have reiterated many times this does not include spends that go on influencer uh, the, uh, the buying of media through influencer marketing this is money that is being spent by brands like sugar cosmetic on you know hiring influencers using them across uh, various uh, uh, media verticals so thank you uh, for doing this kaushik thanks for being here uh, kaushik as uh, you all know is the co-founder of india's one of the hottest sort of we can call it startups uh, uh, so and and as we know it's a company that is widely followed on social media and while i was going through the report that we've curated with group m it also says that you know uh, cosmetics and beauty is a category that lends itself naturally to use of you know influencer marketing in fact it it is one of the categories that is the highest in terms of use of influencer marketing and you guys have been you know experts at it so tell us kaushik what are the things you know a few things that sugar cosmetics has done right that has made it one of the most followed sort of you know brand companies on 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 social media like building a brand there are always starting troubles but we will switch tracks and grab someone else's mic if need be and channel if need be but naval thank you so much for having us here i know uh, she mentioned that this is a very uh, uh, much awaited session i hope it's not because it's the last session but i'm here to share whatever i can be very candid about it uh, naval you mentioned how sugar has been scaling and we are being seen as experts uh, of this i want to add a caveat to that i think we've been at it for a very long while <laughs> we've been very long term believers so वो कहते हैं ना कि एट सम पॉइंट इन टाइम यू रन आउट ऑफ मिस्टेक्स टू मेक एंड थिंग स्टार्ट वर्किंग आई थिंक वी हैव सीन दैट हैपन एंड दैट हैज कंपाउंडेड ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम बट टू योर क्वेश्चन आई थिंक व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड बिल्डिंग शुगर अ लॉट ऑफ आर इन्वेस्टर्स द मार्केट्स हैड लुक गाइस स्किन केयर इज अ मच लार्जर कैटेगरी व्हाई आर यू ट्राइंग टू बिल्ड कॉस्मेटिक्स इट्स इट्स ग्रोइंग बट इट्स आल्सो स्मॉलर बेस नाउ वी ऑब्जर्व समथिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बैक देन बिकॉज़ कंजम्पशन ऑफ कंटेंट वाज हैपनिंग ऑन पर्सनल डिवाइसेस it was easier to get traction on and engagement on on a color like on a category like cosmetics because see today i mean it's beautiful i was uh, taking notes from shivani your session about how skin care brands have you know worked social media so beautifully these days but back then we used to feel that at the end of the day skin care dissolves in your skin so it would be very hard to engage the audience and it had to be more nuanced for us you unpack a box of lipstick and you swatch it and you see color and you hear, see the audience react so back then when people were just figuring out what to make of the content it was a very very hungry online population that wanted to learn what to do with makeup how to use makeup so it wasn't it was a mix of education and also entertainment edutainment if you will a much abused word these days but i think that having done it consistently over a period of time um, helped us because and and i want to reiterate this we can't always over index on engagement because i was just having a conversation yesterday where i uh, sort of banned my uh, linkedin uh, my 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 colleague my dear colleague who leads that saying that yaar tum bahut zyada poll kar rahe ho itna poll kyu kar rahe ho and they like engagement hota hai i'm like had hai <laughs> like i'm like you can do polls but then unless you opine on the result of the poll you're not building thought leadership so what is this poll i'm boosting my engagement numbers i'm like yeah, that that's cheating so i think we got to be true to what we stand for similar to um, running an instagram page i mean there are incredibly high engagement accounts and pages that are a meme factory there's nothing wrong with being a meme factory but then as a brand do i want to be a meme factory i can't be at best i can do one out of maybe i don't know 20 30 posts so some of these guardrails that we scale some of what you measure the difference between primary and secondary kpis we've been 
sort of sharpening our stance on the problem. So tell us, wise. very interesting that you make these points and in fact, uh, I think a lot of want brands, this is working <laughs> now. So a lot of brands and, you know, agencies who are sitting here today have been kind of struggling with this entire thing in terms of what KPIs to set and Shivani also made a very important reference to that. And there are, you know, dozens of, uh, you know, views out there in the market. There are brands who revel in doing memes online. Some want to continue to do polls. Some, despite the view some of us hold, want to drive sales as the KPI. What is a good mix and balance to have four or five KPIs, which you can measure, say, over a period of time, and also link back to the influencers you are using to judge whether, you know, what you've been working on worked or not? So, and I'll, I'll say this knowing that there are many agencies in this room. It is very, very dangerous to go down the line of promising sales. I hope my team is not listening to me, but it is. <laughs> because, see, at the end of the day, no matter how and where you market, ultimately it boils down to the funnel. Awareness, interest, you know, desire and action. So, in India, you can't force somebody to buy your product. They will buy your product when they want to buy your product. So, your only option is to be in their consideration set at the time when they need that kajal or when they need the vitamin C serum. So, you can't make someone buy it. So, then what are we solving for? You can pump in coupons, tweak discounts. It's not going to build sales. So, if the conversation is around sales, I know sometimes to meet sales numbers, you have to promise sales. <laughs> but I think it's not a very honest conversation. And uh, so, I actively discourage such conversations and say that, okay, it's not that we will not measure anything, but I will hold you accountable to reach. I will hold you accountable to engagement. Impressions. Sales, I'm okay to let it go because you know, as long as I'm in the consideration set and people are in the funnel, then the product team has to work on how my product views to say add to cart percentage increases, how my add to cart to checkout percentage increases. Your job is to get the person to walk to my store. That's it. That's right. Because I think where we, as a new brand, people don't even care about you. So you're not in anybody's consideration set. I think content marketing is a lot about featuring in people's consideration set. Absolutely. Anything above that is not being honest. I think, uh, you know, this takes me back to the old days of, you know, start of television in India, where people were just doing advertising on cricket or other programs, just to be in the consideration set when you were coming up with, you know, brands owned by behemoths like Levers and, you know, Proctors and Proctor of Gamble, Proctor and Gambles of the world. And you just wanted people to be able to sample your product, look at your product. I think content marketing and all of these new age digital platforms are in many ways reinventing all of that learning again in, in dare I say, you know, a far more complex manner. Tell us, uh, now moving on to, uh, you know, Kaushik, the sort of the entire gamut of uh, influencer marketing, one aspect and the perhaps the most important aspect here is the use of influencer itself, right? And this is kind of, you know, an evolution of how brands came to use, uh, use brand ambassadors, right? Companies have been using uh, brand ambassadors for as long as uh, advertising has existed. Uh, and today that use of influencers has got very complex. There are, you know, A-listers and there are macro influencers, micro influencers, nano influencers. When you keep going down the funnel, look at, you know, smaller influencers who might have deep penetration, but not as wide in terms of following. What is your view in terms of how do you look at this entire piece and how do you use each category of in influencer and for what kind of activity that you're looking to do? Uh, fabulous, fabulous question. I think, see, historically, the best part about the last decade is that it has democratized influence on purchasing thanks to a rise of digital influencers. Now, everything is clubbed under that. Your micro, mano, micro, nano, and your celebrities as the, as the three pies that was put up. I think what we do is we ask ourselves, what's the desired, why are we thinking of engaging with someone. And I think that has very clear, distinct answers. We are either engaging with an influencer for content, or we are engaging for media, or we are engaging for just trust. And I'll, I'll just add a nuance to all of that. See, initially when we used to do influencer marketing earlier, we said, okay, wow, this is really expensive, but then she's got uh, crazy following, so let's just, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, push our content. And we used to wait that, okay, I'm going to be featured in this celebrity's post. And when we were featured, we were aghast. And I'll tell you why we were aghast. Because firstly, our story appeared sandwiched between 12 stories, okay? Cut, 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 cut. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, I didn't even feature. And even the post, it's like a very, see, it's important to understand a struggler influencer 
is going to take your content, you know, buy paraphernalia about it, uh, around it, and make a post which is sometimes outstanding. They're going to spend six hours for a sure. look. Absolutely. Now, a, a na a, a, let's say a macro influencer, he or she doesn't need to take so much effort to earn the five lakhs she will out of making a post. So why will they take that effort? So we are very clear that if there is a campaign that needs to be amplified using media, that's when we really hit the celeb accounts, and that's when we really, you know, invest money in the macro accounts. But on a daily basis, you know, we have a, you know, we have a small team in us that where there's somebody who we internally jokingly call as the casting director. Okay, it's her job to uncover people who are under 5k um, influencers, and you know, we have done this before, wherein we have spotted someone who had exceptional talent, and we reached out and said that you know what, we have a two million plus account on Instagram. We love your work. What do you want? Take any product you want. We want to feature your work. And for them, they want recognition. Yeah. Earlier, recognition was still um, not very tightly coupled because you had to tag them. Now with collaboration posts, it's become even easier to give credit and they see a huge follower boost. So they take the effort to create outstanding content. So whenever we want great quality content, we do that. Whenever we want media, we do macro uh, influencers, the only catch with the first one is it's like an escalator. You catch them and I'll, I'll give an example. I saw one of the slides, uh, uh, this really talented creator, Nagma. We used to work with Nagma when she was sub 10K and you know, and many others like her. So they start off there, it's like an escalator. You go, 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 rise and then suddenly you realize they're, sp they're spiraling out of control, 100K, 200K and obviously at one point in time they stop working with you because they are not the yeah. young, the early. Right, right, right. Uh, so then we shift them to the media category and say, okay, we'll now work with you only maybe once a quarter. So it's a never ending, it's a little bit of hard work discovering the new talent, yeah. but there are so many people who are hungry for that uh, opportunity that uh, so far it's been scaling. Yeah, I mean, very uh, relevant and, uh, and interesting the points you make. You know, one of the charts in the report I noticed kind of reflects what you're saying is that uh, the use of celebrity or, you know, the types of influencers, 68% uh, of the influencers used by brands are in the category of macro and micro. The least used are celebrity and mega naturally because of cost considerations and the very relevant and important point you just made about the effort they're putting in. And nothing against them. They don't That's need right. to. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Just the fan following, you know, the following on social media brings the traction that you're looking yes. for. But this is the sweet spot as we are talking about micro influencers constitute almost half of the entire, you know, influencer marketing pie. And these are, this is where the sweet spot, you know, lies for brands. Obviously, you want to be judicious in terms of which ones are using. One of the things that people keep talking about, you know, uh, again, the report mentions that. Uh, which is that when you work with influencers, one of the important aspects is bringing trust to the table. You know, people uh, follow what they say uh, more than what, you know, uh, a A-lister would say in, an, in a regular ad, right? But it's a very thin line, right? The trust that followers have on the influencer as well as the trust that the brand is trying to create in the consumer's mind. Uh, what is your view on this, Kaushik, in terms of, you know, when you go looking, hiring a, you know, influencer, there is obviously a temptation to hire the best possible person who can deliver the reach and engagement metrics that you are, uh, you know, looking to deliver. On the other hand, there is also a very important aspect of creating trust with the consumer and the trust that the influencer has with the consumer. So how do you marry these two? They're not contradictory sort of objectives uh, in many ways, but how do you... Uh, get the best possible outcome on these two objectives? So I think our team makes a clear distinction between whether it's a campaign, say it's a, it's a Valentine's Day campaign or a Women's Day campaign, or if it's a new launch outreach. Because in a campaign, a campaign can have a brief, because that's the nature of a campaign, that this is the message you want to drive. You can't control the message if you're sending products for review, because then you're being, again, dishonest. And that you could still get away with trying to control the narrative maybe three years back. Today you can't because, see, because if you're sending that to, say, maybe 50 influencers, one of them will be smart enough to know that if I do a contrarian take on this and saying that, oh, look, this brand is trying to control what I want to say, they're going to get even more engagement out of the campaign. So, so I think those days are gone. We, you know, you, we, every brand has to be okay with an honest uh, uh, review of their product and uh, we are fine with that. So there are many, many PR outreaches which, Actually, we have very few, you know, 
associations where we have a coupon code. I mean, we've often talked about how brands like, uh, let's say, uh, DV, Daniel Wellington, they've really scaled using coupon codes. We've never been able to figure that out. Probably because our current crop of influencers, they are uh, you know, more used to the, the cadence of receiving products and reviewing it. And we sometimes get mixed reviews. Sometimes, because you are being honest with the influencers, if there is something really off, like there was one time when we had sent a product with a mono carton, the outside carton, it was not pasted as well as it should have, they actually didn't put up the post and sh send the product back to us. Completely appreciate that because it saved us some embarrassment on social media. I, I think that happens because we have that equity with them. Otherwise, uh, they would have posted it. Fantastic. Let me come to, uh, you know, the other side, the sort of mirror side of influencer marketing, which is the platforms that, that you, you work on. And, you know, the exit of TikTok from India has opened a whole host of possibilities when it comes to short video platforms. You've anyway been working with the likes of, you know, Instagram and some of the other platforms. How do you sort of look at the entire mix of platforms when you... Uh, do influencer marketing because each platform comes with its own set of strengths, uh, also lends itself to certain type of content curation, storytelling. Some influencers might be strong on, you know, Instagram, while others might be strong on, you know, uh, uh, short video, for example. And it's a, you know, it's, it's not a very simple matrix, so to say, while you're choosing platform, the influencer that matches that platform and the content that you want to create. So how do you handle that matrix in terms of matrix in terms of how do you how do you create your campaigns? So I think we are a little paranoid about this because in our early days I remember Facebook used to be a big deal and one of my really close friends used to run this uh, blog back then called makeupandbeauty.com. They had a million followers on Facebook and insane traction and the way their traction has dipped as engagement has been throttled on the platform. Today when I look at people saying that, you know, it looks like Instagram is also throttling um, the engagement, should we invest in it? So today in India, uh, I mean today on Instagram, we are the, amongst Indian consumer brands, there is no brand which has a higher following count than us, yeah. 2.4 million. Team's very happy. I'm telling the team that look, 2030, we have no guarantee whether Instagram is going to be relevant or not. So we can celebrate today, but what are the niches that are you know, emerging out of that. Like, if you look at Instagram three years back, it was mostly fashion, it was mostly beauty. Instagram has become big for um, finance. I mean, there's there are people, uh, like, uh, there was finance with Sharon, there was, there's Neha uh, yes. Nagar, so th they have massive following, right? So what if tomorrow that becomes mainstream and there's a finance-specific social media platform that rises? How does a brand like Sugar even make a play over there? I don't know today. One of the stories I read recently on an international publication is about in America, how TikTok is becoming the primary source of, you know, uh, niche, uh, topic-specific education for people. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, who would have thought about that? So, which is what scares me, because if, if I look at the pilots which Instagram is running on other geographies, they're moving towards live commerce. Now, I agree, live commerce is going to be huge in India, but that means they're moving towards the bottom of the funnel, which means you can't focus on top and bottom both, right? Which means it leaves the top of the funnel for brands like us, open again and we have to scramble to see which is the next big platform like one of the campaigns we did with Moch. We were insanely surprised because here we are talking about you know impressions in you know hundreds of millions and there in two weeks we are like okay billion plus views. How is this happening? And then we realize that you know we Sugar Cosmetics is operating in a bubble. <laughs> we don't know what's happening outside in the new platforms and then now there are guardrails that you know you have to spend so much of your influencer marketing on new platforms. You decide. Josh, <laughs> Moj, you decide, but you have to, because otherwise we just want to yeah. be left behind. I mean, absolutely. Experimentation, like you started by saying, unless you make mistakes, you won't, you know, get it right. That's why experimentation is very important for brands as long as it is done with, you know, the basics in place. Tell me, you've spoken about, you know, having uh, or not having sales as the main KPI. What are the other mistakes you 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 have made or you've seen other brands make on influencer marketing, which you think are, you know, avoidable and with the changing face of this entire you know influencer marketing piece and the continuous growth of social media platforms will become even more important as we move along so i don't know about other brands i have a laundry list of mistakes which we've made i think uh, hard sell number one mistake earlier we used to before we were a bit more nuanced we thought influencers were a sales channel big mistake i mean firstly nobody likes they're there to create content and receive 
the love of their fans. Nobody's there being a salesman for you, right? So early days, 20, you know, 18 and all that, we changed our view on that. Now, second thing is a bit more nuanced. I see a lot of brands pushing um, their sales and discount-led offers as posts. Now, here's where I think about a you know, couple of years back, we took a call and said that, look, if we want to push a sale, I will push it on stories, but I will not push it on my feed. And I'll tell you why. See, feed, mein kya hota hai? they have followed me, hence I'm in your feed. Yeah. So if I push sales content, at some level, I'm abusing your trust. Because in that feed, I'm trying to push my sales. You, I mean, they'll just unfollow, right? Nobody wants to follow if you continue to push sales. But if I push it in my stories, see, stories, I'm not intruding upon your feed. You are opting to check my stories by tapping on the circle. So if you're opting to check my stories and you see my see my story, then okay, next time you will not tap my stories, but at least you will not unfollow me. Yeah. And we've had, uh, like, every year is different. Some years you double in revenue, some years you scramble to hit 70%, 60%. So there are many times with different SBUs within the company uh, will come and say, you know, can you direct some traffic to this platform? And we've said that, you know, happy to do that, but not on feed. It has to be on our stories because once a customer actually unfollows you, I have never unfollowed a brand and followed the brand back, I, I don't know. So, so I think that's a mistake we also make, that yes, you want to amplify the offers and promotions, but we're in a hamster wheel cycle, right? I mean, there's some one thing ends, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday got over, now there's extended Black Friday. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. I mean, the sales season never ends yeah. globally now, not just in India. Last one, I, I can see the buzzer, uh, we are over time already. You know, the, one of the other fundamental piece, the third piece of this entire influencer marketing thing is the content you create. Yes. You know, with the influencer and then put it on the platform. And content perhaps is the most important piece, so to say, because that requires a lot of creativity, that requires a lot of thought, that requires marrying one the, you know, the strength of the platform, the following and strength of the influencer. Uh, while you have a brand philosophy, you know, you know, what are the ethos of the brand curating that content puzzle is you know the difficult piece so to say because we've come a long way from the 30 second era yes. right and each platform requires very sort of different custom made approach so what is what do, how do, how do you approach it when you when you look at curating content with such a long list of influences across multiple plat platforms so novel and, and present a kind of unified Message to the so, so earlier we used to make the mistake of you know pushing different adapts of the same content on different platforms. Big, I mean that that doesn't help any any anyone. It's it's not what the platform is built for. But I think the the content itself has changed. If you remember when Instagram was becoming popular, flat lays used to be very popular. People used to arrange this, take a photo from the top, great. Can't get a flat lays. It's gone. It's dead now, right? So uh, now it's people are not people don't care about the product. People care about what you do with the product. It's more like a not you won't show the iPhone. You also shot on an iPhone. What are you creating with the product? So for a brand, beauty brand especially, it's incredible how much engagement you can make with the what you can create, the looks. That's why I think tying back to your first question, yeah. what you create with that is very important. And the challenge that I see is that earlier on YouTube you had six to seven minutes to explain your point and you know show how the look has been created. That got crunched to maybe 30 second reel right now. So the attention span is gonna continue to decrease. So the what we talk about that look this is what we stand for doesn't really change over a period of time. But the medium changes and the time span you have of the of your consumer that changes. So the brief to the team is very simple. Even if Instagram allows you 15 seconds of a reel, please create it in nine because there is no guarantee that somebody's gonna watch you for 15 uh, seconds. Eight second rule, yeah, always exactly. remember that. Yeah. And eight second is also eight seconds too long perhaps. <laughs> long. Thank you with that. Uh, thank Kaushik, you. thank you so much for spending time with us. If there are any questions from the audience, we'll be happy to take that, time permitting, maybe two, three questions. Uh, Sam, you have something <laughs> to ask. Can we get a mic to Mr. Balsara? Absolutely. So, Kaushik, first, congratulations on creating a super brand like Sugar. Thank you. Uh, you know, obviously, Sugar is a new age uh, brand. And I'm very curious to know, you know, if you're not, if this information is shareable, what kind of a promotion mix 
do you follow today? So if, you, if you're totally spending, say, 100 rupees on advertising and promotion and everything, I mean, how much of it is, say, television, how much is influencer, how much is on paid campaigns? Would you like to give us an idea of what a new age brand, how it looks at it in, in your current stage of evolution? Sure, sure, sure. So, uh, with one caveat, sir, the only caveat is that we are now, unfortunately, beginning to represent less of a new age brand and now we are like making spends on television which uh, sometimes give me sleepless nights. But, uh, so I will tell you what our percentage-wise current uh, mix is. So, currently out of our year spend, we spend about uh, 30 to 35 percent on television, which uh, is not what Sugar had spent anywhere close to when we were actually growing and we hit the, uh, say, 200 crore mark earlier last year. So apart from that, there's about 10 to 15 percent of pure content marketing and influencer marketing. There is, of course, another 10 to 15 percent of, uh, actually more, 20 percent of performance marketing, which goes into our campaigns, which drive the top of the funnel for our website and our apps, because that's also a significant part of our, uh, uh, part of our overall sales. The remaining portion is the visibility we commit to our channel partners. So which is the glow sign boards, um, the standees, the lollipops, and the sometimes billboards on months which we do it. So that's how the mix is right now. So which means almost, I mean, 40% or slightly more of that advertising spend, if you leave out the channel partner, is still on TV. I mean, that's a significant it, so number it, for it's TV for this year. and. As, so we are now just beginning to make our annual operating plan for next FY. So we are questioning everything that, okay, we did this. We finally bit the bullet. So what do we do? So there was a brand track. Again, brand track we never did earlier. Now there are people who have come in from larger FMCG companies to our companies. So and now we are all understanding the importance of it. So we did a brand track in, say, August. We're going to do that again in uh, Jan. And if the numbers move, then we'll continue. Otherwise, we'll probably roll back a bit of that. Very interesting because if there are any TV advertising executives in the room, uh, is an opportunity for you to sort of tap into a brand that has, you know, increased spends on TV yes. and is now looking at how did that deliver and whether you want to keep it same or perhaps even increase it further depending yes, upon how not, it delivered. Yes, yes. Right? And, you know, for all of you or, you know, those of you who, who think that the era of television advertising is behind us, there is still a lot of juice left in, uh, you know, TV while, you know, digital grows and delivers a lot of performance as Kaushik mentioned. TV still helps, you know, companies like Sugar Cosmetics scale up, build their brand. Any other questions? Yes, there's one. Dharmendra. Thank you. Um, I, I'm seeing things happen which just seem like fiction. I don't even deliberately go to check out the fashion industry or go to, say, Nike men or any other specialized, um, say, uh, beauty or beauty portals. It just lands up on my Facebook wall or my Instagram wall. Every day I see something new. Mm, I, I don't know what's happened or how technology has evolved, but it looks like the plenty of people who are entering the market, the beauty market, uh, they just have this, they just think of a brand, they probably just open a dictionary and pull out a name, and everything else, mm, appears to be outsourced because how can everybody get into manufacturing? So it's an absolutely crazy situation at an industry level. If you are a serious player, how do you face this uh, virtually a new competitor every day? And specifically, how will you handle the influencers because then they'll be paid by those guys at a higher rate and those guys may lose money, but then it hurts you too. So both industry level question uh, generally and uh, influencer level question. So, so you're absolutely correct. I keep telling my people that you can wake up, book an Ola, go to Asangao, come back with your name printed on a nail, pill bo nail paint bottle, and that will be your brand <laughs> you've created in 24 hours. It's, it's actually become like okay, that. I, I've just created a small joke. This is a 10 second joke. Can I tell you? I, I said, please, I, please. I, I tell my friends, it seems to be evolving so much that tomorrow you'll have one hand cream for your thumb and one for <laughs> index finger. And it, that, that, that's a ridiculous, there's a bum cream now available on Nike for, 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 for men. 
Oh my God. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's I, think I think Dharmen, there are enough women using beauty products. Now people like you and me are the next sort of market, right? <laughs> and why people is it like coming? People like you and me are now going to use beauty products. <laughs> and why is it coming on my wall? <laughs> <laughs> I answered the question. I mean, I mean, we are the next set of customers. <laughs> so, so here I have a slightly old, old school thought here. I think the easier it gets to create products, the harder it gets to create brands. And which is why I drive the point home with my team that please choose when you want to, where you want to compete and where you don't want to compete. Like the classic blue ocean, red ocean. Like last year there was a friend slash competitor of ours that raised all the money I think that was available in the market, raised the ground with all kinds of ads and free products and television. I'm like, you know, compete kari, kari sakte na, why are you competing? Matab, just sit back, relax, enjoy the flight, let the bank balance come down a bit and then we will compete again. Because, um, see, the graveyard is littered with brands that could have been but discounted themselves still people didn't want them anymore. Because in India, you again, you can't force people to buy you. They have to want to buy it. It's a, it's a want category. It's not a need category. So preserving a brand and playing the long-term game is what I tell. For that, of course, you need money in the bank to play the long-term game, which is all that I think I personally try to optimize, that uh, just don't go crazy because the competitor is going crazy with the discounts, with the promotions, and stick to your long-term plan. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kaushik. Uh, uh, with that, it's a wrap for the Thank conference. You. Thank you.